Hi, I'm Mr. Sapone here, and today we're going to look at buoyant force and Archimedes principle. Um, there are only three slides, but they're a little bit dense, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, we're going to start with a question. You may have played with people in water or lifted each other up or, you know, tried tossing each other around or, you know, had people stand on your shoulders. Even you yourself, you can twist and spin. We feel lighter in water. Why are objects lighter in water? Why are they easier to pick up? Um, and we know that in any fluid, the pressure acting on it is equal to rho gh. Really important formula that keeps coming up. So let's just take this uh, box. We have a cube. We're going to draw everything two-dimensional to keep it simpler right now. Um, but you have this box. It's suspended in water. It's in the middle of a pool or a tank of water or whatnot. Um, and we know that there is pressure acting on it. All of this water is pushing down on the surface of the box. And we know that it's a function strictly of height because um, the density and gravity in terms of the water are going to remain constant. Um, but we know that pressure acts in all directions. So not only is there water pushing down, there's water pushing in on the sides. There's water pressure pushing up. So you have pressure in every single direction acting on this box. But this surface is further down in the water. And we know that the further down you go, there's more pressure. What that means is there's less pressure pushing down right here than there is pushing up here. There's more pressure pushing up on the box than there is pressure pushing down. Why? Because the bottom of the box is deeper in the water and there's simply more pressure down there. And we know that pressure is force over area um, their areas are equal, so the area is not changing anything. What that means is that there's more force pushing up than there is pushing down. So there's going to be a net upward force on this because there's more pressure here pushing up than there is down. There's more force pushing up than down. We know there's an imbalance of forces there, so we know that there's going to be a net upward force. Um, so on the bottom of the box, we have a greater pressure and thereby a greater force because areas are constant. On the top, there's less pressure and less force. Um, so this really simple explanation does kind of explain why objects are lighter in water. And they're due to this famous equation, pressure equals rho gh. Pressure increases with depth and you simply have more pressure on the bottom of a object than you do at the top. This does bring in some questions and we're not going to get into them in this video, but what if you had an object sitting at the very bottom of the water, say it was glued to the water, um, would it theoretically be lighter or not? Um, and you could talk about changing um, the shape of objects. Um, and there are some really cool discussions we could have, but right now I want to stick to the very basics of Archimedes and principle and buoyant force. And we call this upward push of the water the imbalance. There's, and we're not talking about the weight of the object. The weight still acts downward. We're just talking about the forces due to water pressure. There's more water pressure pushing up than there is pushing down. And if we get the difference of those, whatever amount more there is pushing up, we call that the buoyant force. It's the upward force exerted by the water or the fluid. Um, so that is your definition of buoyant force or buoyancy. Um, so... Now we're going to come up with a derivation for solving some buoyancy problems. Now buoyant force is equal to force up minus force down. What that means is, just what we looked at, the water is pushing up on the can. The water is pushing down on the can over here. Um, we know that it's pushing up more than it's pushing down. So the difference is the net upward force, and that's going to be our buoyant force. In terms of just water pressure, we're ignoring the weight of the can. We're not doing a, a force diagram for all the forces. We're just talking about water forces right now. Um, and we're ignoring air pressure because, yes, air pressure is pushing down on the water, but that's also acting in all directions, so that will cancel out. So just realize that buoyant force is the force up of the water minus the force down of the water. The force up is going to be bigger than the force down. All right, so we know that force is equal to pressure times area. Why? Because pressure is force over area, and we can do a very simple algebraic manipulation of this. Force equals PA, F equals PA. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this PA, and we're going to plug it in for both of these. We're going to have PA up minus PA down. So buoyant force equals PA up, PA down. And by PA up, we mean the pressure on the bottom 
because that's pushing up. Pressure on the bottom times the area on the bottom. And the force down is the pressure pushing down on the top times the area pushing down. All right. So buoyant force equals PA uh, bottom minus PA top. So far, so good. Well, we know that pressure is rho GH, right? Pressure is density times gravity times height. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to plug in this rho GH for this pressure, and we're going to plug it in for this pressure. I know it's going to get a little confusing now. Um, just, you know, watch the video, slow it down, read the PowerPoint. Um, but this is what we end up with. Buoyant force equals rho GH at the bottom. That's what pressure means, times area, minus rho GH at the top times area. We just did two very simple substitutions. We plugged in PA for F, and then we plugged in rho GH for P, and we're left with this formula right here. All right, continuing, well, um, we could factor out this H bottom minus H top because you have a rho G H bottom, a rho G H top. If you look at these, um, it's pretty similar here. You can factor out the A and so on. So you were in with rho G A times parentheses H bottom minus H top. All right, all we did was factor out the common um, variables in both terms. Now, H bottom minus H top, right? This is this and this. Well, it's really just the height of the can. Um, this distance minus this distance is, well, really just what you see in red. It's only the height of the can. So H bottom minus H top is just H. It's the height of the can. So we have buoyant force equals density times gravity times area times the height of the can. All right. Um, are we getting close here? We're very close. Note that the area of an object, the area times its height, is simply volume. So we're going to take this ah can, a can, ah, and we're going to turn that into a volume. So buoyant force equals rho g vf. What's that vf? Well, that's the volume of the fluid. Um, technically, it's the volume of the can, right? But the volume of the can is the same amount of water that it had to push out of the way. Um, and the reason we say that it's the volume of the fluid displaced. When you put a can in water, you have to move that much volume of water out of the way and the water level rises. Why do we say the volume of the fluid instead of the can? Well, because you might have an object that's only partially, that's not fully submerged in water. It might be floating. And you need to look at the volume of the water that you're pushing out of the way. Um, so just realize that the volume of the can the amount of space it takes up is the amount of water that it pushes out of the way. So we change this to volume of the fluid displaced. So buoyant force is rho G VF. Um, and that's really an equation we can use. Um, we can definitely use that equation. Um, there's one other way to simplify this and turn it into Archimedes principle. Um, we know that mass equals density times volume. Density is mass over volume. Um, so mass is density times volume. We have a density times a volume. So we can just turn that into a mass. So buoyant force is just equal to mass times gravity because this rho and this V turned into mass. So this is Archimedes principle. Um, buoyant force on any object is equal to the weight of the fluid that that object displaces. So if you drop an object in water, if it's a phone, it's going to displace an equal volume of water equal to the volume of the foam if it sinks. And whatever, how much ever that water weighs, that's one way to calculate the buoyant force on the object. This can has a certain volume. When you put it in water, it's going to displace that volume of water. If you figure out how much that volume of water weighs, that gives you your buoyant force. Force buoyancy equals the weight of the fluid displaced. And this was discovered 2,000 years ago, well before Newton's laws or anything of that nature. And it really gives us a good idea on sinking, floating, and how much things weigh in water. All right, so let's use these formulas. Let's uh, just do some physics math. Um, looks pretty dense here, but it's not too bad. 
you have a six a 0.650 kilogram garden gnome um, it goes snorkeling a little too low and finds itself at the bottom of a freshwater lake of depth 35 meters so you have a garden gnome um, it's at the bottom of a 35 meter lake the garden gnome is solid with no holes and it takes up a total volume of 0 0.00144 meters cubed. That's actually like a 10 by 10 by 10 kind of centimeter thing going on there, just if you realize your conversions. Uh, the density of fresh water in the lake is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So they ask us to calculate some things. Um, let's just go through these one at a time. What is the gnome's weight? We know how to calculate weight. Force of weight is mass times gravity. We know G. G is a constant. Do we know mass? Of course, they give us mass. They tell us that the gnome is 0.650. So force weight equals mg. Um, that's 0.65 times 10. And the weight is 6.5 newtons. All right. What is the gnome's density? Well, we know a formula for density. Density equals mass divided by volume. They gave us the gnome's mass. 0.650. Do they give us a volume? Well, the garden gnome takes up a total volume of 0 0.00144 meters cubed. So we know a mass, we know a volume. 0.65 divided by that, we get a density of 451. And just for reference, we know that water is 1,000, the fresh water is 1,000. This object is less dense than water, so technically it would float. Um, so the gnome, in order to get to the bottom, would have to actively swim down. What pressure is there at the gnome's depth? Well, we know the formula for calculating pressure um, at various depths in water. Pressure equals rho gh. We know rho, we know density of the water. They tell us that it's fresh water. We know g is gravity, we know his depth. The gnome finds himself at 35 meters. So pressure equals rho gh, 1000 times 10 times 35. Uh, very nice numbers to work with, 350,000 pascals. Now, technically, you should. I won't mark you wrong for not doing this, but that's the pressure due to the water. But we know that there is also one atmospheric pressure pushing down, which is just over 100,000 pascals as well. So this would be about 451,000 uh, pascals if we did the math out properly. What is the buoyant force acting on the gnome? Um, we just figured that out. It's the weight of the fluid displaced. Um, and we also did just come up with a formula for it. Buoyant force is rho g times the volume of the fluid displaced or the volume of the gnome. The volume of the gnome is the volume of the fluid displaced. We know density. We know gravity. We know the volume. You just plug those numbers together and you get an answer. The gnome is 14.4 newtons, the buoyant force acting on it. What will happen to the gnome? Well, I'm hoping you're thinking in terms of physics. Uh, there's The gnome has a weight of 6.5 going down. The gnome has a buoyant force of 14.4 going up. The upward force is significantly greater than the downward force. What is the gnome going to do? Well, naturally, the gnome is going to accelerate upwards. Um, this object's less dense than water. Imagine holding a basketball underwater and releasing it. It's going to shoot up to the top. And I ask you to calculate the gnome's acceleration. Um, the next one, um, well, acceleration is force over mass. It's sum of all the forces over mass. F equals ma. Um, and we know the sum of the forces. Well, there's 14.4 newtons um, pushing up. There's 6.5 pushing down. If you get a difference, the net force acting on this gnome is 7.9 up. So your net force is 7.9 up. What is the mass of the garden gnome? It's 0.65. Acceleration equals F over M. You put those numbers together. There's going to be an acceleration of 12.2 meters per second squared. That's more than gravity. So this gnome is going to skyrocket straight up. It's going to you know, get the bends. Um, if you've ever heard of that, we'll talk about that in a later a video deals with nitrogen and pressure in your blood. Um, so that's basically Archimedes' principle and buoyancy. Um, and you have a homework problem just like this. I hope this is helpful, uh, Mr. Sapone.